working for many, many years in the area of early intervention, um, young children on the autism spectrum, and um, and and having fun with, with research as well. So I've been in my current position for um, just over 12 years now, and really enjoy what I do. And as we become more knowledgeable, um, it, it becomes more and more exciting to really um, make significant change in many of the little ones that come to us. Um, so for the seedlings talk, I thought that I would spend some time um, sharing my ideas on early intervention. What, what really makes early intervention effective for very young children on the autism spectrum? And, um, and share some of the techniques and the philosophy that we um, use at the Early Childhood Partial Program and um, that I believe very strongly in. And then um, also share some of the ways that we impart that information to parents so that they can be empowered to follow through with their children as well, which is so very important, particularly, I mean, for, well, for children of all ages. I work particularly with children um, ages around two to four years of age. And so, you know, I, I can't tell you how many parents I've sat face to face with um, of a child who's been newly diagnosed or a parent who um, has come into our clinic and is, is concerned about their little one and is <coughs> hasn't yet been able to confront the idea of an autism diagnosis but knows that something is wrong and is really seeking the answers of, you know, what can I do and how can I do this fast? How can I fix my child and how can we really give my child a boost in the right direction? How, what can we do? And so you know, that's what I spend a lot of time doing and what I love doing. And, um, and I really enjoy empowering parents um, in understanding how their children develop and what matters most. Um, to make significant change as fast as we can very, very early on. So I thought I would talk a couple of about a couple of areas that I cover in the book, um, both in terms of how we target these areas um, at UCLA in ECPHP, and then also um, how I present the material in the book. Um, I didn't plan on covering every area in the book, of course, there's, there isn't enough time for that. Um, but I thought I would talk um, for, for a while, and, and if you could hold your questions maybe until the end, then I'll, then I'll take some questions um, afterwards, if that's okay. Um, so as we know, um, really when we think about autism, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a disorder of social communication. Um, and there are many other areas of development that are affected as well. But if we think about the, the areas where we, where, that really contribute to a diagnosis of autism, we think about social communication, we think about um, language and nonverbal communication, gestures. We think about social development. <coughs> And we think about unusual responding to the environment. And those are the three sort of main areas that really contribute to a diagnosis of autism. And of course, we can think about um, different areas within those three. So when we think about um, communication, we, as I said, we think about nonverbal communication. We think about gestures. We think about um, responding to other people's communication and language. We think about initiating and, um, and, and spontaneous language and communication. We think about pragmatics, the social aspects of communication. Um, 
we think about the, the subtleties of communication, not just the actual act, but the quality of communication. So all the aspects surrounding communication. When we think about social development, um, there are so many areas under social development as well, um, from face-to-face uh, -face interactions at a very early age, to engaging in the ability to share experiences, or what we call joint attention, to um, social interactions um, that involve a turn taking or to and fro or a give and take kind of structure, um, to imitation, which is a huge aspect of social development, to play, to developing friendships, to um, social problem solving, to theory of mind or the ability to share somebody else's perspective. Um, you know, and we can go on and on as children become older and more advanced in their social development. And when we think about unusual responding to the environment, um, we can think about, um, s again, so many aspects. We can think about why children engage in, in what we c would consider to be maladaptive behaviors. Um, how much has that to, to do with um, a need that, that, that is not being met for that child? be it um, something that they are not receiving from the environment, as we do, so is it some kind of um, sensory input that they're not accessing, or is it some type of um, sensory input that, that they are avoiding? Um, <coughs> is it inflexibility, a need for kind of sameness? Um, so, you know, we can think about unusual responding to the environment in, in many different ways. Um, but those really are the areas that can make up the, the, the core features of autism. And as we know, autism is a spectrum disorder, so we see such a wide range of how children present. Um, and we can, every, we can see children from you know, having intellectual disability to children who are you know, um, performing at very, very high levels of cognitive functioning. Um, but all of those children, if they truly have an autism diagnosis, will have some difficulty with communication, will have difficulty with social interaction, and <coughs> will have some difficulty with responding to the environment. Um, in, in ways that we would consider to be normative. And so those really are the core areas that, that sort of we see in, in every child. So particularly for young children on, on the autism spectrum, when we ask ourselves, how do we make a difference very early on and how do we make a difference as fast as possible I take an approach that really focuses on what we call the core areas of difficulty. What are the core areas that really contribute to autism and where we really need to target very effectively and very intensively early on? Yes, we could focus on a variety of different areas. Of course, for many children, cognitive development is, important, is important and of course, for you know, many children, we might need to focus on um, some aspect of their physical development, so we might need to focus on motor difficulties. Um, so there are a variety of different, you know, other different areas we might want to focus on. Of course, for many children, we want to focus on um, self-help skills. Um, so there are so many different areas we could focus on, but when we really think about very, very young children, <coughs> Um, I want to place the majority of our emphasis on the core areas of difficulty. Um, the areas that would differentiate that child from a child who is typically development, de developing or a child who has some other disorder or difficulty, but it's not autism. So the core areas of difficulty are really where we focus 
for the very young children at UCLA, and the areas that I wanted to focus on in the book. Um, so <coughs> when I'm sitting face to face with those, very, those parents of very young children who are so desperate to do something right away, um, and you know, they've, they've come and they're seeking treatment, and you know, they want to make that fast change, the areas that, that, I'm, that I really start them out on, start the treatment of their children on, and the areas that I really start to educate them very quickly on, are the areas of core difficulty. And, you know, what, what has, what, what is so difficult to see is how desperate these parents are when they come in. You know, they are, they're, they're just finding out that their baby um, isn't developing as they hoped he or she would. And um, they're absolutely desperate to start right away. And they're eager for knowledge and practical strategies immediately. And these are the parents that are sitting in my office where they're at UCLA and they're in our program and you know, we're already starting to work with their child and yet they're still desperate. Regardless of anything we're doing, they're wanting homework on day one. Tell me what I can do. How can I follow through? Um, you know, what is there? And so you know, that was you know, after so many years of work one of the major reasons that I decided to try and distill some of the core concepts that we work on in our clinic and put them in a, in a book that is meant to be easily accessible for parents. It's not a book that is, um, that is comprehensive by any means. I, I didn't set out to, to write a comprehensive book. There are many comprehensive books out there that cover so many areas of development or they cover um, areas like how to access services, how to navigate the service system, how to communicate with other providers, how to um, 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 think about your family and, 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 and raising the child within, within the family. And there's so many books that, that do that. What I wanted to do is really take some really core areas that make a very, very big difference to young children and present them to parents in an easy, accessible way so that they have some <coughs> beginning steps to start to work with their children and to start to feel like they have some strategies. So many parents, I think, turn to alternative biomedical interventions immediately because they feel helpless. They want to start to do something right away and they don't know what to do. They are desperate and there's a lot of information on the web and it's something that they actually can do. Um, and I don't blame them for it. I would probably do the same. And it's not to say that some of those um, interventions don't work. Um, some do and, and some do for different children. But to me it really shows the extent to which parents are really desperate and not just looking for anything that they can do to help. And in the intervention realm, in the educational realm, the therapeutic realm, it's very difficult for parents. They don't know how to start. They don't know what to pay attention to. So that was the starting point um, for the content in the book, um, focusing on the core features trying to distill the information that's important for parents and to present it very simply um, and in a way that would be fairly easy to follow through and easy to understand yet make a difference.